aphids are effective transmitters of plant viruses. Aphid microinjection of virus, the procedure we will show you today, is a technique allowing researchers to inject virus directly into the hemocell of the aphid, bypassing the gut, one of the two major barriers for virus transmission in a circulative manner. Hi, I'm Cecilia Tamurindegui, postdoc in the Plant Pathology Department in Cornell University. Today I'm going to show you how to inject virus into the aphid hemocell, virus that can then be transmitted to different plant species. For example, this physically plant is infected with PLRV, potato leaf roll virus. You can see the difference between a healthy and an infected plant. The most notable symptom is the intervenal chlorosis. PLRV is a luteal virus that is carried by aphids in their hemoland, the insect equivalent of mammalian blood. When an uninfected aphid feeds on an infected plant, it contracts the virus through the plant phloem, which you can see here. Once ingested, the virus must pass from the insect gut to the hemolymph and then must pass through the salivary gland in order to be transmitted back to the physalis plant. An aphid may take many viruses when feeding on a physalis plant. However, only a small fraction will pass through the gut and salivary gland, the two main barriers for transmission, to infect more plants. To test if an aphid is able to vector a virus, we feed the aphids on infected tissue for two days then we allow it to feed in a healthy plant for five days. The plant is then fumigated and after three weeks, we start searching for symptoms. When we find an aphid that cannot vector a virus, we can assess which of the two barriers is stopping the virus using the micro-injection procedure, which I'm going to show you today. In this procedure, the virus is injected directly into the hemocell, thereby bypassing the gut transmission barrier. So let's get started and I'm going to show you how to microinject some aphids. So this is the glass, the glass needles that we use. We pull down uh, glass needles from these uh, glass tubes using a, pull, a puller. So this is the microinjector. To do the microinjection of a virus, I'm going to start putting the needle into the needle holder. So I'll just put the needle and I'm put it in place. So now I'm going to load the virus into the needle to the top of this parafilm. Now we need to position the aphid for microinjection. So I'm going to take an aphid with the paintbrush and I'm going to place it in the aphid holder. Ideally, I'm going to try to place the back of the aphid against the holder so I can have access to the uh, abdominal part of the aphid. Okay, great. Right? Now we can go ahead and microinject. Okay, now I'm going to position the needle and I'm going to bring it closer to the aphid. So now I'm going to bring the needle into contact with the aphid uh, to pierce the exoskeleton. The best uh, thing is to try to uh, pierce in between the segment at the base of the uh, legs. So I'm going to inject now. I'm taking the aphid from, with the brush and I'm putting it into the recover paper where I'm going to allow it to recover for a moment. So we need also to micro-inject control aphid. This uh, control micro-injection is done only with the buffer, uh, without the virus. The buffer that we use is 0.1 molar phosphate buffer, pH 7. So I'm going to place the aphid in a healthy plant where I'm going to allow him to fit for five days. After I'm going to fumigate the plant and wait for symptoms development. After micro-injection of the double-stranded RNA, during a week, each day, the level of expression of the target gene is measured in the aphid. So we have just micro-injected an aphid that was unable to transmit the virus. If after the micro-injection, the aphid is able to transmit the virus, it will mean that this aphid 
had a gut barrier that was blocking the virus. If on the other hand there's no symptom development, it will mean that this aphid has a strong salivary gland barrier. So we have just shown how to micro-inject virus into the aphids. This same procedure is used to micro-inject double-stranded RNA into the aphids to perform RNAi interference, which is an interesting technique to uh, help studying gene function in aphids. So that's it for the micro-injection. I hope you enjoyed and it will be helpful for your experiments.